Hey, Ken, welcome. Jody and I are so excited to have you on our YouTube interview today. We, we, you and I met probably 20 years ago on the golf course. Yep. I remember how passionate you were about the game, and I know that you still are. And uh, you also came with Jody and I on one of our trips to Nicaragua, where we built a couple of homes in a remote part of that country. And we lived like how 80% of the world lives, sleeping on cots with mosquito nets. And we ate rice and beans three times a day and used an outhouse and bucket showers. And we built two homes. Yeah. Oh boy, wouldn't we love to go back there today? That's it's, the Ken Favreau, I know. I know, I know. <laughs> That's how I met you, yeah, for sure. And you know, we stayed in touch and you've had an amazing career that we're gonna get into in a minute. And really excited about the second part of this interview where you really start talking about your retirement. It's just been phenomenal to hear and to follow you. Lots so, of cycles in your retirement, yeah. lots of phases. So welcome. Yeah, definitely. Thank We're you. Thank you. Have. It's a great pleasure. It's good to see you both as well. Oh. So I'm going to jump right in, but I'm going to throw you a little bit of a curveball because, uh -oh. um, yep, here we go. Already starting. So <laughs> I want you to talk about your career, but I want you to end this first part up and around 2015. Yeah. So give us kind of the early Ken Favreau, what you were doing, what you loved, what you were passionate about up to about 2015. Yeah. So I think of my, I guess my uh, traditional career as having started when I got out of business school. Uh, gosh, that was 1983. <laughs> um, and went into full-time consulting, uh, full-time management consulting. I started with one of the major firms for a couple of years, and then I joined a startup uh, consulting firm and was with that firm for 25 years. Half of that time was in Europe. Uh, maybe we can come back to that, but that was a life-forming experience. Lisa and I, my wife, went over there with a one-year-old. We had two while we were there. We raised our family there. But that was half of that 25-year stint at the firm Maricon, uh, which is a startup consulting firm I referred to. I also spent six years as the CEO of that firm, which was also a life-forming experience. Um, <laughs> I think that's I think, when we met. I think that's when we met. And it was very yeah. difficult to get you out on the golf course at that point. That's right. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if I ever told you this, but I was suffering from mental uh, I was depressed at that time because I think that job had become so oppressive to me uh, that uh, I was struggling with it mentally. Um, uh, and then uh, after two, three year stints as CEO, a couple of years later, we sold the firm. And um, that was my opportunity to change my scenery. And um, I joined, make a long story short, I jo joined um, Boozing Company, which was the original consulting arm of Booz Allen that most people are familiar with, and uh, was asked to lead the global strategy practice, which I, I did for about five years. Um, and in 2015, um, Booz sold itself to PwC. And um, that was my opportunity to do something which I wanted to do probably since the day I met you, Mark, was to quote unquote, retire from full-time management consulting. Because up until then, you were, would you call it 70 hours a week? Oh my gosh. Um, so management consulting is very high pre uh, pressure profession. Uh, you know, there was for, I was thinking about this the other day, there was about 15 years in there when I was working 75 hour work weeks. It was wow. basically seven days a week, 75 hours and um i knew it was taking its toll physically yeah, yeah. and mentally i mean yeah. i knew therefore that it was not sustainable uh so well before i quote unquote retired in 2015 i was thinking about my exit um, yeah so well, you had really mentally prepared for this concept of retirement in 2015. so i made three key decisions um before I quote unquote retired in 2015, in the year 2000, that was at, that was about my 15th year of working 75 hour work weeks. Oh. I said, this is not sustainable enough's enough. So I gave myself a plan to 
um, gradually cut back. And I just started setting arbitrary limits. I mean, ultimately they were arbitrary. I said, okay, no more seven days a week. I don't care what's going on. Right. You're not going to work on Saturdays. Um, and then the next step after that was no more 14 hour days, you know, come 12 hours, which seems ridiculous for most yeah. people, <laughs> come 12 hours, <laughs> you're you calling an end to the day. Um, so I went from a 75 hour work week to a 60 hour work week. I then cut that further to 50 hours. Um, and at that point I said, I don't really care what happens to me professionally. I just can't do more than that. Yeah. Um, yeah. that was my first decision. Uh, and that was 2000. Uh, my second decision, I don't think I've ever told you guys about, which was um, around about 2010, I hired a therapist. Mm -hmm. uh, and I started to see him every Monday. Wow. Because um, I knew the end was coming for me. And, but I didn't know what was coming after that. And right. uh, so we talked a lot about that. I just, every Monday, we talked about me retiring. Um, okay. To the point where he retired before I did. Because he won <laughs> so much from our conversation. You talked him into it. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um, and then, of course, 2015 was decision three, which was was to to stop full time consulting. So, what was that um, like? So, 2015, yeah. the business was sold, and was that it? There was no um, hanging around a little bit. They just said, "Have a nice day," or or you voluntarily just left. Well, actually, the the hanging around a little bit happened about 12 months prior to that okay. day of, of finally okay. saying goodbye. Uh, we had an open conversation about that. Um, so it was it was a bit of a glide path, which, you know, is, is a bit of a theme uh, for me in terms of how to manage the later stages of your of your working life, really. Right. Um, so no, it wasn't that. And, and thanks to talking with my therapist once a week, it, it, you know, I was talking more about what I was going to do after retirement, um, in five years before I actually did it. So mm -hmm. I felt like, you know, you never know what it's going to be like until you do it, but I right. never planned on going what I called cold Turkey. I never, right. ever intended that I would I would stop quote, I would stop working. Uh, it was more the nature of the work that I was really interested in than whether I was going to work. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so you left and did you, you certainly did a lot of soul searching. You did a lot of reflection, which is something we encourage our clients to do. You, to just walk out cold turkey without any planning at all. And, and I'm not saying you overplanned, but you knew that this was going to be hard. Even, even the steps from 75 to 60 to 50 hours a week to yeah. zero yeah. Uh, was going to be dramatic for you. So you did a lot of reflection, which is great. But what did you do? I mean, day one, that m next Monday morning, what was your plan? Um, my, my plan, uh, and, and I, I don't know how prescient I was about this, but the act of seeing that guy once a Monday, one, once a week was my act of soul searching. Yeah. Um, I needed that mechanism. I couldn't do it on my own. It's funny, you know, I can exercise on my own. A lot of people need trainers, right? Before they'll get to the gym. Uh, right. I don't need that. But when it came to that soul searching, I needed someone. Um, right. And it had to be someone outside of my family and circle of friends. And right. It had to be someone that I could say anything to and know that it was a safe thing to say. Right. Uh, anyway, so uh, I knew that when that day came that the next Monday, I was going to set up my own little advisory firm. Okay. Uh, and the point of that, I called it act two, um, which was very purposeful. Uh, I thought of it as act two of my career. Uh, so when I use the word retirement, I used it in a traditional sense of the sure. word, but I never really thought of myself as retiring from working life. Uh, it was really, I always say retiring from full-time consulting. Right. Well, I um, think if I remember correctly, you had a inspiration around that. Maybe someone in your family that kind of showed you the path there. Yeah. Um, I think you might be referring to my dad. Oh, yeah. um, Great story. Uh, he was a model for me in a number of respects, actually. Um, it, 
uh, he was a small town lawyer. I really liked the idea of having a profession. Uh, so I, I, I dabbled in, you know, the idea of becoming a lawyer myself, didn't like it, didn't want to do it, had heard him complain about it too much. Then I dabbled in the idea of becoming a doctor, a medical doctor, and uh, didn't like chemistry, organic chemistry. And around about that time, um, this thing called management consulting uh, emerged as uh, a new business that was hiring straight out of schools. And I'd always been intrigued with business, even though I'd, I grew up with non-business parents, maybe that's why, but I was always intrigued with it. And I said, that could be my profession. Mm -hmm. uh, so he was, he was a model for me in that respect. Mm -hmm. But the more important thing that he modeled for me was, again, this glide path theme that I was talking about. He was 91 when he died. Uh, and when he was 90, he still had a client. <laughs> um, and, he, around about 65 or so, he, he, he started to cut back, but he didn't go cold turkey. You know, you know, he kept, it was half time for a while, and then it was two or three clients for a while. And at the very end, it was a client. And uh, that always seemed to me uh, a, an elegant way to manage the later stages of, of your working life. So I set up Act 2 with the idea that um, it would offer me the ability to control my own glide path. Right. Um, I, love that probably, word. I love the yeah. glide path. I yeah. love that because we're you have to coin glide. that phrase. Yeah, I think we might steal it because no, <laughs> it's yours. It's <laughs> oh, you said we can have it because I, you know, that's what it is. It's th this whole idea, you know, what Jody and I are trying to do with ourselves and with the 10,000 people turning 65 every day, the baby boomers now, the Gen yeah. Xers. Is, this, there is no retirement anymore. Yeah. There's, there is this, yeah. and, and, and you've, uh, like us, didn't know there really were phases, but this is this glide path into a life of some work, some pleasure, some relaxation, taking care of yourself. There's, it's not, it's not uh, like a hard stop. Right. right. So, so two things on that. One is sometimes I hesitate to use that term glide path because it sounds a little bit like coasting. And I don't mean coasting at all. Right. Um, right. You know, it's the engine's it, still on. It, it's a little bit like, um, you know, there could be too much of a good thing, which, you know, I like to work. Uh, it's just that I don't like to work seven days a week, 75 hours a week. And, yeah. uh, you know, I want a little bit of, of I want to do work because uh, I think it keeps me physically and mentally healthy and happy. Yeah. Um, so I don't think of it as, as coasting. Uh, and the other thing is that, you know, I sometimes uh, realize that everything I had done up until 2015 really was about preparing me for what happened after 2015. Right. 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 Um, second, all the stuff that I learned, all the experience that I get, I'm sure you guys, you know, have felt talk that about same that way. all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I just wish I'd known that. I kind of wish I'd known that you know, I was actually preparing myself for something that would come well, later. It's interesting so. because that's what we tell our children. That's what we tell the 30 and 40 year olds that are in our circle that this first part where you're building wealth, you're creating a family, you're buying some homes, you're getting some roots, you're creating great relationships. You're finding and out what you're you learning. like to do. Yeah, you find out yeah. what you're good at. You find out yeah. what, you know, what's that thread that you want to continue to do. And I keep know. track of it. Yeah. You know, yeah. So that boom, when this glide path comes that you know what you want to do. So you started um, Act 2 in 2012. Was it 2015? 2015. So yeah. what's happened since? Because in, in yeah. 2020, um, you had a little bit of a pivot. Yeah, well, th yeah, it's funny how things turn out. So Act <laughs> Two turned out really well, actually. I, you know, I managed to. I wanted to keep it to two to three clients. I wanted to keep it just me, not a team, just me, because I felt like, um, you know, I really enjoyed the mentoring part of my consulting career, mentoring to, to CEOs and being empathetic with the plight. Uh, that they're in and and with the kind of issues they have to deal with and you know providing a sounding board so that was my goal two to three clients because I wanted to keep um, act two the the consulting part of my life 
to halftime. Right. And I was pretty routinized about it. I mean, for me, halftime meant 7.30 to 12.30. I, was, I knocked off at 12.30. <laughs> and that gave me all kinds of room for other things that maybe we can talk about as well. But um, two to but three you also, Ken, you also um, got office space outside of the home. And you're very, very important. Yeah. Really important. I credit really, Lisa. With drove to work every day. I, I credit Lisa with that one. And by the way, that was another respect in which my mo my father was a model because as I mentioned, he's a small town lawyer um, and he lived, you know, his office was a mile from our house. And I always, I, I decided that uh, based on that, I never wanted to commute. Right. Which I promptly did for 35 years. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Plus you were in Europe for a long yeah. time. Global so. commute. Right. Global yeah. commute. Um, and uh, so anyway, so when I set up Act Two, I got an office in this little village that we live in, Bronxville, Westchester County, which is a mile from our house. And so I get up, I get dressed, I go to the office yeah. uh, and uh, I kept it half time. And that was really important, uh, is still really important. Um, uh, and then about Three years into Act Two, um, I met the CEO of a startup company through one of, of the founders of Maricon, the firm that I'd worked with 25 years, and began to uh, advise him and mentor him. He had never been a CEO before, and uh, I had, so most of the stuff that he was dealing with, I had seen before and can empathize with him and whatnot, and I really enjoyed him. And he started to talk about joining the company full time. And I resisted and resisted and resisted and uh, said, how about part-time? He said, nope, that won't work. And uh, he kept pressing on it. Um, and uh, uh, I remembered something that a partner in my early career had, had said when he asked me to go to London, which is before you say anything, I want you to go away and think about the conditions under which you would be enthusiastic to go to London, which I always thought was really clever. Right. Um, Cause it kind of puts the onus back on you. Uh, right. and, um, and, and, and you have to do it responsibly. You can't ask for the moon cause then you look like an idiot. Um, so I, I applied that to myself and came up with all my conditions like no commuting, no travel, uh, no revenue responsibility, been there, done that, no people responsibility, been there, done that. Mm -hmm. Two of the most uh, the strongest sources of stress there is in one's career. Uh, and uh, I wanted also, importantly, time for other things. Uh, and I was upfront with them. I'm going to continue to write. I'm going to continue to travel. Lisa and I had made a policy decision uh, about that. Um, and, uh, you know, I was going to continue to uh, teach. I teach now. And uh, so I listed out all those conditions. And he said, yeah, and what? Let's go full time. Wow, and, that's great. Uh, yeah. So, so against my better judgment, um, I ended up joining this company as the full time, the official title is chief strategy officer. Uh, and, um, and oh, the other condition was finite. I told him it would not be an open ended commitment. Right. Um, I said, I want to go back to what my original routine was, uh, but I will help you scale the company, get it ready for exit. So this, this is good through the end of 2022. And whether you exit or not, I'm exited <laughs> at right. that time. So. Right. You know what I think is important for everyone to realize is um, you really reflected and you did an assessment, right? Like we talked about, ab about the things that not only you were good at, but the things that brought you joy throughout your various roles and careers and then move them forward to this great opportunity. So you didn't shy away from the great opportunity because it was full time and that was you know, a hard stop. It wasn't the time as much as it was the talents that you wanted to use right. and bring and the stress you wanted to minimize, which in your form of retirement, you were able to pitch, right? Um, yeah. and, and that's got to give you like liberty and freedom and you know, kind of, yeah swag because you know take it or leave it i like you a lot take it or leave it but take it because it's going to be added right. to the company and i think you know that's inspiring to so many viewers who say 
I retired. I'm not going to work. There's that, you know, wall. Yeah, and you're not going to work because there were so many parts of it that you were doing that you hated. And you right. thought right. that in order to continue working, you had to do that. Right. And you right. don't, right? You right. don't. As opposed right. to this evaluation process that you can go through and say, you know, hey, I was, you know, you may have been really good at the revenue side of it, but the anxiety and the stress and the That's pressure right. and the darkness that kind of came with it, yeah. kind of at this stage of life, not worth no, it. No, it's not. So I was good at it, not worth it. I can advise on it, don't want to respons be responsible for it. And I think when we originally talked, that was to me such a learning for our community um, because your way, your terms at this phase of your life. And I think that message you guys send around, you know, the need to, to do some soul searching um, yeah. before, yeah. before you, before it actually happens is really important. And I didn't necessarily, I didn't have the presence uh, to think about that, but that weekly session that I had mm. um, and we would talk about a lot, what I hated and, he would legitimize it, you know, right. Okay. You're a human being. You don't have to love everything. You don't have to be great at everything and it's okay to not like things, but that helped me. If you articulate it to someone else, you're articulating to yourself. Uh, and it becomes part of your decision criteria. And, and you know, uh, the, other, the other thing is you, you have stuck with this management consulting piece that you're very good at and you love to do. You've eliminated the parts that you don't like, yeah. you know, for Jody and I, when we retired, we didn't say, well, we want to start an online business helping entrepreneurs and executives make this transition. Right. That evolved over our soul searching seven years ago when we started thinking about our retirement. What are we going to do? And this just evolved. And we'd had no training on, on editing film or running cameras right. and doing all of that. And it's just, we've learned so much, which is the other thing that we all continue to do. Maybe we can touch on that as you're continued desire to to learn and you to be know, a long life learner long life learner and, yeah. and and one of the best ways to learn really is to to teach and to share your wisdom right. with others so so i, I really i'm really glad you raised that. that point i'm glad you raised that point because one of the things that attracted me to working with this company um full time was the industry that it's in um, okay. it's a, it's a SaaS company which you know is means software as a service and that's a growing part of our economy. You know, it's, it's, it's a new part. And, I, you know, I was a Luddite on that. I really wanted to learn about that company. And um, so it was, it, it gave me energy to think about, you know, being in a, in a situation where I could learn that, that kind of business that I'd never really been exposed to in my, my prior career. Um, and yes, I had always wanted to, you know, one of my alternative career choices back in the day was academia. Uh, I do have that academic bent. Sometimes that got me into trouble, but <laughs> I'd, I'd always had that. Uh, <clears throat> you know, my, my, my mother's side of the family were all teachers. So I'm sure there was some kind of DNA in there uh, around uh, wanting to teach and so uh, I pressed my university for a couple of years and finally found someone who would spend time with me to learn from me what I thought I could share with the student body. And uh, that led to a, a teaching position that I now have. And, That's great. Uh, you know, and they always say, you know, the best way to learn something is to teach it. And, yeah. you know, so I learned as much from doing this as, as you know, the students do from me. Um, right. Well, during our chats, one of the things, and you mentioned it earlier, um, you know, during our, the three of us, our careers and, you know, building businesses and all of that. Yeah. But there was that and retirement that we didn't really, we didn't really think about phases. But when we spoke a couple of weeks ago, you talked about phase one was your heavy 75 hour week career uh, that dropped down to 60 and then. 50. Right. And then phase two is act two. And your current consulting position that ends um, next year, what is, and, and you know, you, you didn't realize you had phases until now, but what does phase three look like for you, do you think? Well, I do have a plan. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm a bit of a planful person. It helps, you know, uh, manage my anxieties. Uh, so, yeah, I will. Um, 
my plan is uh, when I'm done with my full-time commitment uh, with this company, uh, I will return to Act Two uh, mm -hmm. until around 70. Okay. Um, and then at 70, I'll probably wind that down. Uh, maybe it'll wind it down to a client like my father or uh, just wind it down altogether. And then at that point, I will be focusing all of my energy on uh, writing and teaching. And uh, I figure I'll have the energy to be, a, you know, to, to teach until I'm around 75. And then I'm going to focus on writing. I have a trilogy in my mind. Uh, wow. I finished the first of the, of the trilogy. The manuscript is done. And I have two others that uh, I want to do. I would just love to do it right now, but don't have the time. And that there is golf after all. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, um, you know, I figure around 75 is when I'll, I'll, just be writing until until I meet my maker. Mm. You know. That's great. Is this trilogy a novel or is it a- Oh gosh, it's I, nothing that exciting. I doubt it. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> knowing Ken, I, I don't thinking, think so. I it's nothing that really exciting. Really what do you mean stretch. knowing me? No, I it's- know. <laughs> I know. I'm sure it's, uh, I'm sure it isn't. It's on the three subject matters that I've consulted on, I've written on, I've taught on uh, over the decades of my career. It's on strategy, number one, on organization, number two, and innovation, number three. And Sounds like uh, the makings of a new course at, uh, Stanford. at Stanford. Three courses. <laughs> three courses. <laughs> three courses. <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe a capstone. You're right. How to put it all together. How to put it um, all together. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Why don't we jump yeah. into his life, his personal life? Yeah. I would, you know, um, I was saying to Mark and, you know, certainly to you and knowing you and Lisa and, you know, your family, um, how does your family react to you being, you know, the planner? Are they planners as well? Does it, and then how do you plan for family with, you know, writing a book, being a teacher, working full time? I know you like to travel. I know you like to play golf. So how does it all come together with family? And we are going to join you on one of your walking trips in Italy soon. Oh, we yeah. promise. Oh, please do. You please keep do. inviting us. Yeah. It sounds yeah. like a sounds awesome. tremendous yeah. opportunity. Sicily yeah. in October. Sicily. Wow. <laughs> um, one of the things that um, uh, Lisa and I talked a lot about, uh, it, because we both like to travel, uh, we both have a bit of that wanderlust, uh, was that there's a time frame um, when you can count on, not count, you can plan to be active. Right. And uh, for us, that was, you know, we, we think that you can plan to be active until. 75. It sounds awful to put a number on it, but we think you can plan to be active until 75. We might be unlucky, might not be that long, or we might be really lucky, might be longer than that. You know, we have friends that we're not lucky. Uh, and we know people that are physically active and traveling way beyond 75, but that was it. And we had this discussion when we turned 60 and we said, well, if that's right, we've got 15 years. So we basically planned, you know, I, I, as I tell people, I went from saying no to everything. Nope, can't do that. Nope, can't do that. To saying yes to everything. Um, and so we travel a lot. And remember, that was one of my conditions with uh, the CEO that wanted me to join full time is that, you know, I don't want to feel guilty uh, about Lisa and I. I'm not going to change that the terms of that agreement that Lisa and I had. Right. Um, the other thing I'll say about family is, you know, during that 15 year period when I was doing ridiculous, uh, putting in ridiculous amounts of time, I did something that I'm not sure I would recommend to everybody, but I decided that it was, I was, I was doing two things. I was building a business, hence the 75 hour work weeks, and I was building a family. Um, and that was our, our three kids and, and Lisa. And everything else I was cutting out. Uh, I cut out exercise, would not recommend that. <laughs> I cut out friends, I would not recommend that. Um, uh, we cut out travel. Uh, I never got that mental break uh, that, that everybody needs. Right. Um, but I prioritized building family because I was in a type of profession where it's very easy to never see your family. 
And right. so I just didn't want that. Uh, and I was blessed with Lisa as my wife, who was very accommodating uh, to all of that. And was, was uh, you know, she, she held us together for a long time. Um, I, I don't talk to my kids that much explicitly about planning their lives. Um, it's more about modeling it. Um, just like my father, he never really talked to me. He never sat me down and said, this is the way you live the rest of your life. He just did it. And right. I saw what he did and he was a model for me. Right. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, this, this idea of modeling, I love your um, semi-annual gathering for your kids and, and you and Lisa, because Jody and I do the same thing. I'd love to have you talk about that a little bit. Biannual, um, biannual. So biannual. We, stole this, we stole this idea from, from some very good friends. Uh, and the idea is that is, is it's a policy decision, which is uh, every other year, uh, we're going to, Lisa and I are going to host uh, a family vacation somewhere really nice where even your, your adult age children uh, want to go. Right. And uh, we allow them to include their significant others, uh, married or not. Um, I like your idea, Jody, of there being a minimum threshold. Uh, <laughs> they, yeah, they, they couldn't have met last night in a <laughs> yeah, bar. Right. It's gotta be. <laughs> we, when we do, right. I've got, I've, but we also have six children, so I, I needed some right. conditions around. Yeah. Right. We only have three. Fly by nights. And only one uh, each. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, and it's a bit of a splurge, right? Because it has to be yeah. nice enough that they want to go. Uh, right. And it has to have a range of activities so that we can all go away and do what we want to do on a daily basis. But we know we're all getting back together again at the end of the day. Right. And it's a great idea. I highly recommend it. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be a fancy vacation, actually. It could be it just doesn't. something uh, that pulls the family together. And everybody knows it's going to happen every other year. Right. Um, so they begin to at least mentally, if not physically, uh, prepare for it. And uh, so it's, you know, I really credit uh, that, that idea to someone else. But, you know, I'm glad we stole it. Yeah. That's great. We do the same thing. That's we great. love it. So you give um, a lot of advice and over the years have given a lot of advice to, you know, CEOs and senior managers and now in your teaching role, certainly, you know, students and, you know, college students and maybe even junior professors and different pe people in the faculty at, at the university. Um, you know, you write books and people read them, you know, our viewership is, you know, people five years or more from retirement, people about to retire, people who have already retired. Is there a piece of advice or a nugget of wisdom or, you know, one way to just say, you know, critical success factor or a KSF, a key success factor in management <laughs> language? Um, is there something that you would put out there and say, you know, this really helped or this could really help? Well, um, I mean, I have to credit uh, you two for this, but I, I think um, soul searching is really important. I really, you have to start thinking about it bef way before it's going to happen. Um, because when it does happen, your mind is so busy with, you know, what am I going to do now that if you have, it's a little bit like what Mike, Michael Jordan, um, they, he, he, they would ask Michael Jordan, um, do you get nervous? Uh, when you, you know, before a big game, because he was such a star, he was such, uh, he was so much better than everybody else. The expectation was that he was so confident that he wasn't nervous. And his response was, I'll never forget was, uh, the more prepared I am, the less nervous I am. Right. And um, even Michael Jordan had to prepare uh, for, for those big games. And my point is that you have to take the time to prepare yourself for those big changes uh, in your life. And um, that's where the soul searching comes in. That weekly discussion that I had uh, with, you know, with the therapist was really looking back was really about my way of getting prepared uh, for a big change in my life. And uh, that I recommend to everybody. Sometimes those changes happen to you and, you know, they're sudden. Um, you can't, you obviously can't plan for that, but you can plan for retirement 
And by planning, it's not financial planning, although that's a big part of it. It's the mental preparation. Just like yeah. my, Michael Jordan needed that mental preparation, everybody needs that me mental preparation for the big change in your life. That's great. Well, that's, that's certainly amazing advice. And what you're doing, Ken, and continue to do to inspire Jody and I to keep doing what we're doing, it's nice to have this community that we have to, to share ideas and concepts on what um, retirement could look like and, and, and is like versus the old traditional of sitting back, taking it easy and doing nothing. Right. Today's right. interview was amazing. I it loved great. it and we yeah. can't wait to share it and hopefully have you share it. And um, again, wanna thank you so much for doing this with, with us today. And for those of you watching, if, if you liked it, pl please like it, um, share it. Subscribe to our channel so that you can stay up to date on our latest videos and um, and join yeah. our Facebook community yeah. if you're um, out and about and around yeah. Facebook. Uh, we've got a great community and lots of things going on there. All so. those links will be down below. But anyway, Ken, thank you so much again for doing this. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Jody. I really admire what you guys are doing. I think that you're serving a great need that's only going to grow in the next 10 years as our generation yeah. Yeah. Uh, moves into the next stage of their lives. All right. Well, thank okay. you. Thanks. Okay. Bye.